Algorithms are the defining feature of this period of the digital paradigm. Artificial intelligence uh, is what Pedro Dominguez calls the master algorithm, the algorithm that computes algorithms, other ways of doing things, better ways, safer ways, more efficient ways of doing things. And society is full of algorithms. In a previous a previous uh, part of the lecture, we already talked about how algorithms are everywhere in your working world, in your personal world, in your behavioral world. And sociologists also actually make use of these kind of notions in their own world. Bourdieu is talking about habitus, habitus, the way we behave. Uh, Giddens talking about structuration of society. Habermas is talking about the transition from the life world the more organic world to the system, a more algorithmified version of it. And Bergen and Luckman talk about the social construction of habitualization and institutionalization. So it's an institutionalization of the way of doing things that's at the heart of a lot of social evolution. Now, I'm going to get a lot of critiques of throwing all these concepts here together from, from my colleagues from sociology, but I want to communicate the basic notion is that how we describe social evolution and, and, and social evolution and what, what sociology studies itself has a lot to do with these kind of, of patterns, algorithmic behavioral patterns, recipes that society itself behaves by. And that goes way back, uh, the way that we prescribe of uh, the, the best ways of, of living um, go back to the code of law and the beginning of the code of law. And I showed you here the examples of 4,000 years old code of laws. Now, 4,000 years ago, there were very few of these recipes of the way of doing things. There were, for example, in Western civilization, the Ten Commandments. It would literally fit on a, fit on a stone. You could write them down. Now, we created many more prescriptions, recipes of ways of doing things since. So if you look, for example, at the tax code, you can see that only in the last century, how it basically exploded from you know, less than 50 of up to like more than tenfold it basically. So the number of words that are embedded in the words of numbers that are embedded into the tax code. So we increasingly, that's what sociologists basically, and I have to do that very hand wavily, talk about when they talk about the structuration or the habitualization, the habitus uh, uh, of society, that conversion of this organic life world into a more systematic way of organizing our society. And it happens with all kinds of ways we live by. If you look at transportation laws, they also increased a lot. Now, what we're doing now with algorithmification is we put that into machines. So a self-driving car has to learn all the transportation laws and a tax software has to learn all the tax rules. Now, and then we ask the master algorithm, machine learning of finding maybe even better ways of doing things. So there are two ways. First of all, traditionally, the algorithmic component of society has increased over the last few thousand years. I think, you know, that we can say, say for sure. And then now we make this, this structuration, this algorithmification, actually the focus of this paradigm of finding even more and better ways of doing things. And you can see here, for example, that's a concrete example. I showed you this algorithm of the tax code that we looked uh, on at the 1930s. That's what it looked like. That's the flow chart of this specific question of the tax code that asks how to define a dependent. And there are some if then clauses. It's not important that you can see that, that you can really see the details here, but that's kind of like the complexity of the algorithm. Now we did the same thing in 2016 and you can see the algorithm became much more complex. The ways, the structures that we live by, the algorithms of life have become much more complex over time. Back in the days of the 10 commandments, you know, the rules were pretty simple. You shall not kill. And nowadays, well, you shall not kill, but if the person enters your home and if there is the possibility that the person has something in the hand that might assemble a gun, but if you're not certain that it's a gun, but if it could be else, if then, else, if then, and the homicide you know, uh, law books are like this thick nowadays. It, 
So we becoming much more concrete in our routines and subroutines and subroutines and machine learning also focus on that. It kind of like fine grained society. And with that, that's a ironic thing. We use machine learning to make society more predictable, make things more predictable, but actually we create more complexity and uncertainty. And we actually measure that in some studies. So if you go on Wikipedia, that's what Wikipedia looked like when there were mainly human editors. That's the level of complexity. It's not so important that we go into the details here what it is. But nowadays, a big percentage of editors on Wikipedia are bots. And all other things considered equal, things became much more complex, thanks to bots. So bots also check yourself very quickly. It's very difficult to do vandalism on Wikipedia because a policing bot will come around and just return the page. Now, it's very difficult to have a spelling mistake in Wikipedia because Wikipedia is like, hey, you know, that's a scam or that's grammatically. So there are many bots that are on there, but it also made the dynamic, many other things considered that we control for here, it made it more complex. Another good example is the stock market. Uh, a vast part, the vast majority of trading in the stock market is done by artificial intelligence nowadays. Now, if you look at the stock market dynamic, just figuratively, and but we really did some math behind that, and try to represent it in a flow chart, that's what it looked like when human traders were in charge. Now, with trading bots, that's the complexity of the stock market, using the same methodology as we did on human traders. So with bots, the, the algorithm itself became much more fine-grained. So before, when humans were trading, this is from 2006, you were basically trading, let's say, you were trading from the dollar on the cent. Now, there's no money anymore in the cent. It's the micro, micro, micro cent, right? So you cannot, like, the bots fine-grained reality to, to a level where it's infeasible for, for humans to actually make money because the trading is so fast and on such a micro level that bots are in charge. So there's some high frequency trading and so forth. And it basically fine grained the distribution. So that's what we do. So it becomes traditionally humans uh, increase the amount of structure in society of algorithmic ways of, of doing things. They, they become habitus. And now we put artificial intelligence in charge to automate actually looking for even more structure, structure within the structure. You see that? Now, that doesn't stop here. I mean, uh, organizations are super algorithms. And I already talked about, there's many processes that go on in companies that now people work on trying to fine grain. And actually the entire economy itself is a really super, super algorithm that is in the process of being algorithmified right now. So let's take our company. Let's say in the company, there's usually an information system, a software system that's known as ERP. Enterprise Resource Planning. I guess what the software is in charge of. But plans helps to plan the resources of the company. That's been going on for a long time, and some of the biggest player in the in the market actually, you know, made their made their business with e ERP software. Now there's also software that helps you to manage your supply chain. It's called SEM, supply chain management. And again, some of the biggest player concentrate on that. What actually do you buy? The procurement. What does the company buy? What, does, what gets into the company? So that's the procurement part of it. And then also what's the selling part of it, the commerce part of it. We often interact with that. So it's the CRM, the customer relationship management. When you go to an online platform and you buy something, uh, then you're in touch with the CRM, with the customer relationship management software. Now, this is all these processes are getting fine tuned. These are traditional systems. They have been around for a long time. And some companies, new companies came up and they become very big companies because they focus on this part of the, of the organization. Now, it doesn't stop here because obviously my client also has a supply chain management connected to my customer relationship management. And my supply chain management is connected to their customer relationship management. And then their client as well have this, you know, it goes all the way down uh, the economy to the supplier of my supplier. And on the other end as well, it goes all the way up to the client of my client. Most of the economy doesn't happen at the consumer level. It happens somewhere in between of companies that produce things for other companies. And that's when Walmart famously said, like, we connect so in real time with our digital, digital straight line that actually if you pick up a carton of milk from the shelf, we already automatically, the cow is called to produce another one. So this happens now in real time with a digitalized economy. And then I have some competitors. Of course, the competitors also have all these information systems. And when we meet, we meet in these 
marketplaces, B2B, business to business market. Hey, by the way, all these technical terms, please write them down. You will be in touch with them and you will hear about them or you do hear about them when you're out in the industry, when you're in your jobs. So it's important that you get used to these kind of words. You know, I drop them for a purpose. ERP, SEM, CRM, B2B, and so forth. It's, it's useful to have them. In a digital reality, these are terms that do matter and have mattered. Actually, these terms have mattered for, for many decades. So we create this, you know, super algorithm, which we call the economy. And I actually presented that for a reason in the way I did, because like, what does it actually look like? You know, that looks like it looks like, well, it looks like a super flow chart. It's actually a state machine, right? So it actually, no, it is no, uh, I, I use this analogy uh, on purpose to show you that actually, yes, as I said, once you put these algorithm glasses on, you start to see everything as algorithms. And that's what we're doing here. We algorithmify a process that's been around since the beginning of humankind. We create, we put, induce more structure in society. Uh, and now the center of this paradigm is to actually make the search for these structures, the output of the master algorithm, which is artificial intelligence embedded by machine learning. And that's what algorithmification is about. Now, please learn a little bit about these terms, CRM, ERP, SEM, and, and check out this video to learn a little bit more what has been going on there and what will be a driver on the economic side of algorithmification.